He showed it when we started breaking him, you know, just class over class. He, he really stood out. Out of the more than three million horses registered by the American Quarter Horse Association, No Name depicts the spirit of quarter horse racing quite as accurately as that of the late, great Dash for Cash. Old at Phillips Ranch in Frisco, Texas, in the spring of 1973, Dash for Cash had every right to become a superior racehorse. His sire, Rocket Wrangler, won the 1970 All-American Futurity and himself carried the blood of Hall of Famers, Three Bars, and Go Man Go. Dash for Cash's dam, Find a Buyer, was from the famous King Ranch and was a close descendant of the same family which produced Secretariat, arguably the greatest thoroughbred racehorse of all time. But lots of horses are well-bred. It takes a combination of bloodlines, physical ability, and spirit for a horse to have the potential for greatness. Even then, Lady Luck and the human team of owners, trainer, groom, and jockey influence a horse's chances for greatness. Dash for Cash was blessed in every category. Owned by Mr. and Mrs. B.F. Phillips, trained by Bubba Cassio, groomed by Andrew Emerson, and ridden by the great Jerry Nicodemus, Dash for Cash was surrounded by the best. In a sport known for close finishes, Dash for Cash won 21 of 25 races and was seldom seriously threatened. The races that he won, there was never a photo. So that's a big relief when you trot down on your horse and they already got your number hang up, you know? And uh, I'm not saying that uh, there's not other great horses, but he, I think his dominance will always stick out in my mind. Legendary jockey Jerry Nicodemus rode scores of horses in his 30-year career, but his favorite was easy to pick. I wouldn't hesitate a bit, be Dash for Cash. I think he had uh, more class and uh, disposition and talent than any horse I've seen. Dash for Cash was the first horse ever to win the Champion of Champions two years in a row. The first time he shattered the Los Alamitos track record, running the quarter mile at sea level in 21 and 17 100 seconds, a record which has stood for more than 20 years. Yet it was his second Champion of Champions victory which crowned an illustrious racing career. There were six world champions in there with him. Uh, Jerry, Nicodemus, and I both knew that the horse wasn't at his level best. Uh, he had had a little stomach ache in about the middle of the week. And Jerry, uh, you know, we talked about whether we ought to run him or not because that was his very last race. We hate to get him beat his very last race. And Jerry said, oh, come on, let's run him. He said, uh, you know, he, his class will beat him, uh, beat him. And that's about what happened. It wasn't my trainer, he was riding him. I think it was the horse's class that, that went in. So being that the last one, being that made him uh, Two-time world champion, two times the win the champion. It was all there in one package, and I guess that was a nervous. Uh, I have got to run in the horse. I just bet it's over. As great as he was as a racehorse, Dash for Cash became an even greater sire. As soon as his offspring hit the tracks, he became the most sought-after stallion of his time. However, had it not been for a minor accident as a yearling, Dash for Cash might not have remained a stallion at all. This is something I've kept back for a long time, and, and uh, it's never been told. But uh, BF and uh, had decided, you know, we had went through the Bermuda, so to speak, and Wendy Ryan was uh, by Silent Light, which was the dividend mare that BF had, and everything we had bred her to, it, we'd come with a runner. So we decided to keep Wendy Ryan. Uh, he was the best individual to look at uh, by far. Dash for Cash was a big, scaggly-looking thoroughbred kind of a yearling. And uh, they had had a storm there on the ranch. And uh, a bunch of these colts run through the fence. And Dash, as I remember, laid a big, superficial, kind of just tore the hide back on his right shoulder. And they had stitched it up. And uh, when they started castrating all these colts, well, they didn't want to throw him down and afraid they might split the shoulder open. And uh, 
So Biff said, I'm going to send this colt on and uh, go ahead and break him or do what you want to. You might want to break him or uh, whatever, but said, uh, go ahead and take the stitches out. They'll be ready to come out in two or three days or whatever. And uh, then you can either cut him or go ahead and break him and do what you want to. And, uh, you know, I read a lot of magazines where it said he's the best one we ever looked at and we knew he was, you know, hey, let me tell you, that didn't happen. Though Dash for Cash himself died in 1995, his offspring, especially his sons, led by the great stallion First Down Dash, have carried on his legacy. There has never been a more dominant bloodline in the history of quarter horse racing. In the 1990s alone, such world champions as Down With Debt, Dashing Folly, Win A Lot Of Cash, and SLM Big Daddy, all trace directly to a horse who was really the name of the game, Dash for Cash.